Welcome to the Coffee with Karen podcast, a weekly chat show discussing everything from holistic health to current affairs, from a mental, physical, and spiritual perspective. Get your weekly cup of positivity with a sprinkling of woo-woo. Welcome to Coffee with Karen, a cup of positivity with just a sprinkling of woo-woo. Um, I'm your host, Karen Roberts. I am a holistic weight loss and transformation coach um, for women. I do focus on the mental, the physical, and the spiritual perspective. So there's always a little bit of woo woo, just like this show. So each week, my guests tend to be coaches, either from the mental, the physical, or the spiritual, or a combination of all three. So um, I'm going to uh, allow my guests to actually introduce herself. Um, Julie, if you could let the listeners know a little bit about who you are, what you do, and a little bit of your story, please. All right. Well, thank you for having me. My name is Julie Clotty. I live in New York State, across the pond from you. Um, <laughs> so I own a personal training studio in the beautiful Hudson Valley, and I am also a habit and lifestyle coach. So I opened up my personal training studio five years ago and, you know, everything was going good. And then there was this thing called COVID. I don't know if anybody remembers that. So, um, you know, we were shut down for nine months here in New York state. Um, we went completely virtual. I was on, you know, the brink of a mental breakdown, depression, anxiety. I'm closing, you know, totally ready to give up because it was, it was a lot. And, you know, I was caring for a hundred plus women and their mental health. And I was, you know, the last person that got taken care of. So January, 2021 rolls around and, you know, I'm reading a book, Atomic Habits and um, by James Clear. And I was, it just totally hit me. I'm like, this is everything that's been missing in my life and my client's life. So that's where the habit and lifestyle and routine stuff comes in. And just by starting to do my own little practice of it, because I've met, done things my way, I don't have a title for what I do because everybody is an individual. So how you go by your routine and how I go by my routine are two different ways. And we have to find what works for each individual. But it has made a complete change in my life. I went from you know, drowning and trying to just get out of the ground to, you know, living a very fulfilled life. I work less than I've ever worked in my life and I'm more successful. And that's really because I have, I figured out how to get my habits and routine in check. And that's really, um, you know, how it all started. I've been a personal trainer for 10 plus years. Um, I went to college for it. So I have a bachelor's and a master's. So I have all the fancy certificates and the education, but I needed what they didn't teach me in school. And I, you know, needed to find that out for myself. Uh, I mean, well done you, because I, I totally can relate. I'm, I'm actually quite grateful that I didn't have my studio during these times. Um, I, uh, I was in the fitness industry myself, 25 plus years, 27 years actually. Owned my own fitness studio in the Algarve for eight years. And... Moving back to the, the UK about 10 years ago, I just didn't have the energy to, to set anything up again. And obviously with what's gone on, you know, it's been heartbreaking to see friends of mine that have, you know, set up their own, you know, not a franchise. I know the amount of work it takes to build something like that and to have it taken from you through no fault of your own, through the madness of, of, of what's, what, what's still going on, um, I can imagine that must have just been just so demoralising. And I'm so sorry for that. However, isn't it interesting that you've managed to turn it around? Yeah. And, you know, I truly believe, you know, life is always working for you. So I, you know, we luckily I have an amazing business coach who kind of saw this coming, not obviously COVID, but what was going to happen. So we were completely virtual before the shutdown. We were streaming live classes. 
Um, and I learned techniques that I never would have learned. I can now edit videos. I can now edit a podcast. Um, so because I had all this time to learn all this stuff and I needed to do it because we were now in the full digital age. You know, this is the digital era, but we were in the digital age. There, there was no in-person contact. So I, you know, became my own little Richard Simmons, Jane Fonda in my house, my little condo and was recording workout videos. And, you know, and it also gave me another aspect of my business. We are still virtual. I train people who, one of my clients moved to North Carolina. She's still with us because it's now, we're now, we still have this virtual aspect. So there were every, you know, every, every rainstorm, every thunderstorm has a rainbow at the end, has a silver lining. And I truly believe that, but I didn't believe that in March, 2020, it took me a while to get there. And, you know, I now can show that to other people that, you know, life is always working for you. It may not seem like that now, but everything does happen for a reason. We just have to figure it out and keep moving along and not dwell on the negative that happens. Because if we keep dwelling on the negative, we're never going to see that positive that is supposed to come out of that negative. And there are a lot of good things that came out of COVID and the shutdown. And you just have to look for it. And you have to be willing to look for it. That's another thing, you know. So, you know, you talk about the woo-woo and everybody says, oh yeah, everything happens for a reason. Well, it, it's true, but you have to have that mind that's open to look for that reason. Cause you can look for the negative or you can see the positive because you always find negative in every situation. Like, you know, and, and it's it's simple from complaining about the weather to, you know, complaining about, you know, what your kid's eating for lunch that day. You can always find something to complain about if you're looking for it. And it's, it does, it's not hard to look for something to complain about. There you go. And it, isn't that funny uh, you mentioned there about, <laughs> I mean, aren't there people that you come across that seem to complain about absolutely everything? And it's just like, like what you're teaching, really. It's just a habit that they're in. Sometimes they don't even realize that they're doing it. They're just in this habitual way of complaining about the real silly things. And when you can turn that around, and you're so right, it's we all have a choice, don't we? And, and, and I've got to admit, personally, I really struggle at the beginning of all this <gasps> madness. Um, and you're right, if, if you're too, and, and it's okay, it's okay, it's natural, right? You know, this was pretty major. It is yeah. okay, but what you said earlier about just not dwelling on it. It's okay to dip. We're never going to be, oh, hi, rah, rah, 24-7. Um, you know, it's just not possible. We are going to have this sort of fluctuating emotions. But the key is, like you just said there, just not dwelling on it. Because otherwise, you can't see the door that, that's open. All these old adages are so true, aren't they? Yep. Yeah. And it's, you know, I, I say that all the time and it's, you know, you can, and, and it's so hard to change that mindset of thinking negative, but, you know, and it's also, you know, it's also comes from fear and, you know, fear is just an opinion. It's not real. Fear is false. Like you're, you know, you're afraid of heights. Well, it's, that's not a true thing. Like heights aren't scary for everybody. So our own fears are what bring us into that negative standpoint, but, and always complaining. And I, you know, I tell people all the time, like, there's no point of dwelling over things that you cannot change. You cannot change, you know, here in America, you cannot change who's in the White House. It doesn't matter if you agree with the president or not, you can't change it. So, you know, and I have clients that are older that ask me, you know, my one client was just here today. And she's like, to see the numbers like just doubled by 214%. I'm like, okay, well, if two people had it and now eight people had it, that's, you know, in percentage wise, that's a big number. I know it's more than that, but it's like, no, I don't worry about that because I can't change the numbers. I can't change what's happening on the news. I can't change the crime rate. I can't change gangs. But what I can change is how it makes me feel or how I react to that news or how I make my day better or how I avoid that side of town and do something else. So I'm not going to that side of town to get scared because now I'm scared and I'm stressed. And then when you're stressed, you're wasting time because now you're pausing to do something else that's productive. So the only thing that I can control is myself. And, you know, I, I was getting into that, watching the TV and getting all, I got to wear a mask. I'm not going anywhere. You got, I'm not putting a mask on. 
you know, that was me at first. And then I'm like, well, it, it's okay. Like, yes, it sucks, but I can't change it. And I can either be miserable and stay in my house because I refuse to put this thing on my face, or I could just go about my day, put this thing on my face and realize that it's really not that bad. So, you know, and I'm not changing the governor's opinion. It doesn't matter what I say, how I feel, nothing I say is changing that. And once I was able to realize that and accept it, and that goes for everybody, like, until you're able to accept, like, you're not changing anybody else's opinion. So commenting on somebody's thing on Facebook that you don't agree with isn't doing you any good. All it's doing is fueling their fire. And that's what they're looking for. Cause yeah. you know, and we talk a lot about, um, you know, like imposter syndrome, like when people are posting the pictures of their kids doing all the, getting all these high achievements. Well, you know, they don't post a picture of their kid when they're getting arrested. Like that's not something that anybody talks about. Right. So it's like you have good things just because you're not a Facebook poster doesn't mean you don't have good things to feel accomplished about. And, you know, there was people just looking for attention, you know, like, oh, I lost a pound today. Good, good for you. You know, <laughs> like you should be more focusing on the next pound, not taking those five minutes to post it on Facebook to get all these people to congratulate you. And, you know, when we get stuck in that of what's going on in everybody else's life, it's because we're trying to forget about what's going on in ours because we're not happy. So it's yeah. getting into the routine and the mindset to create those habits to get us in a happy state. So, you know, I always say we're trying to get out of the storm and into paradise and paradise looks different for everybody. There you go. And that, I mean, you're so right with, especially with um, the news, like, you know, and I've, I've said this a couple of times on this, but yeah, I admit how, you know, I was literally you know, the first sort of week of when it totally shut down, you know, had the news on 24-7. It was actually my own daughters that came to me and said, hey, mum, you, you, because I think they were concerned that they could probably see me dipping. Say, mum, you've all, you've always told us not to watch the news because it's so negative. And I'll be sat there going, yeah, but, yeah, but, as I like, yeah, but this is different. And uh, so it was quite interesting that my own children were the ones to, bring it up I mean I'm lucky that they were actually listening to me previously and they took it on board and I did switch it off and actually since last Christmas I haven't even we don't even have a television in the house so wow. and I have never been so happy yeah. <laughs> I have to say because I don't have to listen trust me you can't avoid it because somebody will post something that are our blessed powers that be <laughs> um whatever they've <laughs> said you can't avoid it but again, it's going back to that dwelling on things. You know, you, you can have the information as long as it goes over your head. Because like you say, we can't do anything about it. So focus on your own health, your own body, your own habits. And there you go. I mean, I have to admit again, it's terrible, isn't it? Even being a coach like this, my habits just went. Oh, yeah. Totally out the window. I, I, I'm back on it now, but I have to say, yeah, I definitely let things slide, uh, especially this last year, actually. This last year, I found the hardest. Um, so yeah. how did you find, how were you when you first stopped your personal training, so you, so you weren't working out in your, whatever, your studio, how did you deal with things personally? Forget your clients for a moment. So, um, you know, I was at first, so I, um, I don't know how to sit still. I don't know how to relax. I have one, I have one day off a week and that's Saturday. So I woke up on the first Saturday, like, so we, we shut down, it was a Friday, right? So that Saturday we were still, it was still normal. Like I think the lockdown started like a Sunday night. So that whole first week went by, I'm home every single day working, it's okay, right? Not it hasn't hit home yet. I wake up Saturday morning and I look at my wife and I'm like, "What are we doing today?" Because it's now Saturday is like our adventure day. She's like, "Going to the couch," and I'm like, <laughs> "What? No, we got to go somewhere." And she's like, "Where are we gonna go? Target?" Like, there's nowhere to go. And that's when it hit me. I was like, "This is real." Like, we're you know, she's like, "We've been home all week," and I'm like, "I know, but this is like adventure day," and we're going to the couch. And she's like, yep, same place we've been the past seven days. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, this is, you know, this is real. And that's when it hit me and I had like a breakdown. I'm like, I can't do this. Like, you know, and it was only going to be 15 days. 
And that was the big thing. It was a 15 day pause. And that was the same for us. We had exactly the same. Two yeah. weeks. Longest 15, longest 15 days of my life. Um, and <laughs> you know, there was days I was up to one, 2 AM working. So at first I was so busy trying to save my business that I didn't notice anything. It was just, it, it was go, 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 go until bed. And then you wake up. And then eventually I was like, I just had like a complete breakdown. I think I took off like an entire day. And then I started to realize I was like, I'm, you know, I was eating like Kraft mac and cheese and chicken tenders for lunch every day. And, you know, I was drinking at 12 o'clock in the afternoon because I could. And, you know, it was just, and I was still working out because I had to record these videos but it wasn't the same type of workouts that I do. I'm a power lifter. So I wasn't power lifting in my house because now mm. also it was snowing in April in New York. It rained every single day. So there was no going outside. It was like, we lived in England. It was awful. <laughs> right? So it was like the worst weather. So it just made sitting on the couch and watching Netflix that much easier. So and it was, you know, eventually, you know, and my wife's an attorney, so and she works for herself. So she lost her business. We both became unemployed and just on the same day, pretty much. And it was like, what are we going to do here? So eventually we just, you know, we had a pact that every day we showered and got dressed. So it didn't care, matter if you put on a fresh pair of pajamas, you showered and put on clean clothes. So that was the one thing that we did. And that made a huge difference because you started the day. Right. It didn't matter if you did it at two o'clock in the afternoon, you got, you know, the old day off of you and whatnot. So it wasn't really until probably about June, July that I noticed that like I was in complete turmoil because now it's the summer and we still can't do anything. And, you know, at this point, gyms aren't even talked about in the in the in New York State, like not even mentioned that we have all these phases. Gyms are nowhere to be found. So I started to, you know, I started to journal. I started to go back to planning my day because I stopped planning because what was I going to plan? Mm -hmm. But I was still working. I was still training clients on Zoom, but it wasn't my same routine. So I was like, I don't need to do this. Right. And uh, my, I, so I dusted off my planner because it's now covered in six months of dust. And I was like, I started planning and I got back into a routine. Now that routine looked different than February 2020 because there was no more travel to work. There was no more, you know, my morning routine looked different, but my morning routine also got better because I wasn't starting my day so early. You know, my 5 a.m.ers weren't working out in their house at five o'clock in the morning because they'd wake up the rest of the house. So my day was starting at like eight, nine o'clock compared to 4 a.m. So I really started to focus on my mental health. And the first thing I did was plan because that is the power behind everything. If you don't plan your day, you're planning to fail. So, um, you know, I just got back into that routine. And then, like you said, you know, 2021 came and it's just a really bad sequel. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's because at that point now we're reopened, but I went from having four staff members to being a solopreneur again. So I'm now mm -hmm. here from 5 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. every single day because I can't afford to pay staff because we lost so many people because it's... We, I'm still living in New York state. We're still wearing masks indoors. Even when you're working out, we're still in pods. You can't share equipment. You can't, you know, yeah. so it was still, I went from 150 clients to 75. So now, you know, and my bills didn't change. If anything, they increased. So, you know, I now had to worry about trying to find, you know, help. So that was my main focus. I'm like, I will, you know, so I had to reduce my costs, like my expenditure and the things I was doing just so I could have an afternoon off. And so that's what I did was just focus. And I just, you know, I kept writing it down. I have this saying that's it's actually on my whiteboard to the left of me. Money flows to me easily. And that's one of my daily affirmations that I say every day. So that is a habit that I say every day. I started saying that every single morning and every single day before I left the office. And next thing you know, the people just started rolling in the door. So I was able to hire people, but you know, part of that went to getting back to my habits and doing my daily affirmations and not laying in bed 
And on my cell phone, I was getting up at 4 a.m. and I was at work before class started. And I was getting 45 minutes of work done before class even started. So now I had more time in the afternoon for myself. So it was, re- again, my routine still doesn't look the way it did in February 2020. And it's probably worse because in February 2020, I wasn't working in the evening. And now I am, but I have more time during the day to do what I need to do, to go to the grocery store, to go wash my car, to go to the doctor, you know, these silly Mm -hmm. things that we take for granted that when you're, you know, trapped in a, you know, in a situation that you can't get out of because there's other things that need to be done. That's the last thing that gets taken care of going to the post office, you know, silly things like that. So, um, you know, and then I just really got back really into planning and into my routine and, you know, I'm working you know, five hours a day, Monday through Friday, um, at the office. And that's cause I want to. Um, so I really just, it's just, I can't, I can't, I can never stress enough. Like when you take control of your routine and you have your day working for you, not against you, how much time you get back. And when you look into your bad habits and how much time you waste, if you lay in your bed, if you're listening to this, you lay in your bed in the morning for 30 minutes on your cell phone. You are wasting two and a half hours a week times four. You're wasting about 10 hours a month on your cell phone. That's just in the morning. We're not talking about laying down at night. Yeah. And throughout the day, it's amazing how many. Yeah, that's just, that's just in the morning when you don't get up out of bed to start your day and to start your morning routine, which I talk about a lot in my coaching is your morning routine. What you do in the morning is how it, what you do in the morning before you leave your house is how your day is going to be. Absolutely. So you set yourself up for success the minute that you turn off, turn off your alarm. But when you're turning off your alarm and you're laying in bed for a minimum of 30 minutes, I won't tell you that the average American spends a minimum of 45 minutes in bed on their cell phone. And they can't even tell you what they looked at because you're yeah. asleep. And that That's screen makes you even more tired. So yeah. um, all that time that we are wasting can be used for other things. I have a, I have a client that actually retired six months early by turning off her cell phone and and leaving it in another room and getting up and getting everything in order. She got her finances in order. She got all this other stuff in order. And she was, she felt comfortable retiring because all of this other stuff was taken care of the stuff that she never had time for because she works nine to five. Right. It, I mean, it's amazing. I think people really don't. I mean, I know sometimes, I don't know, my, my phone will give me, you know, how much screen time I've been using. It's amazing how much time is totally wasted. And you're so right. You're so much more productive um, first in the morning. And so it is, it, isn't it? It's, it's just about finding balance, finding that work-life balance. And really, I think, you know, our time is is, is everything. This is, you know, at the end of the day, most people think they want to make more money, but actually they want to make more money so they can save time because actually their time is more valuable than actually <laughs> the money that's coming in. So for people out there, if they have sort of, you know, been a little bit off with uh, what's been going on, how, how, would you, uh, how would you get them to take control of their routine? So... The first step is, is to write out your routine, like write out everything that you do. And that goes from the second you wake up. So brushing your teeth is part of your routine. So, you know, when we first, when I first talk to someone and talk about their routine, we leave those things out, but it's, those things are key. Taking it, if you take a shower in the morning, if you brush your teeth, when do you make your coffee? Do you read the newspaper? Do you turn on the TV? Like, Every little thing that we do, because we don't know where our time wasters are. And most of the time, if I tell you to write out your routine, it's going to be wake up, wake the kids up, get the kids dressed, get them to school, leave for work, you're working, whatever, you come home, you cooked it. That's what people think their routine is. But there's all those things in between, you know, and It's, you know, do you stop at, you know, the local gas station in the morning and get a coffee and then you're sitting there talking to the cashier or talking to a friend that you meet there for 30 minutes. So now when you get to work, you're even more frazzled because now you're late and you're not even, you know, starting. It's so there's all of these little things that we do every day that we really need. We don't think about. 
because they're so not to, you know, be a play on words, but they're so routine. We don't mm-hmm. think about it, you know, like yeah. brushing your teeth. So we really have to figure out what bad habits we can get rid of because we don't need to get rid of them all, you know? So, you know, playing words with friends at seven o'clock in the morning while you drink your coffee with your best friend that lives on the other coast. Yes. That's time on your phone, but is that really a bad habit? Because that's how you and your best friend are communicating who you can't see. So, you know, there's all of these different things that we have to figure that could be, you know, being on your phone is a bad habit when you don't need to be, but what are you doing on your phone? You know, are you FaceTiming your kid that lives across the coast because they're now adults? Are you, you know, so we really just have to figure out what we're doing. And then when you look at that, it's also a real eye opener. It's also like when you, as a personal trainer, I have somebody write down everything that they put in their mouth and then they're (laughs) like, oh my God, you know, so when you start to write things down and it's on paper, that's when it starts to be real. And you can see, you know, and then look at my favorite thing is when I, I'm on a coaching call and I say, everybody get out your phone and I show them how to go into their settings and see their screen, their faces of my clients. They're like, oh my God, because you have no idea. It's just like, you know, when Netflix tells you, are you still watching? That's because you've been on that couch for a very long time. You know, but you don't realize it because you're just doing it because it's not on paper. We don't realize things if they're not in black and white. So that's really, you know, the big, um, you know, the big part. Right. So this is all to make people a lot more productive. You don't realize how much time you're wasting doing, you know, silly, just wasting your time, really. It doesn't mean you can't be on your phone, but it's just like, yeah. In the beginning, just using your time most appropriately. Um, so, how did this all change? How do you think doing these little things? Because at the end of the day, I, I mean, I don't know why we're looking for one thing to change everything, and it's not, is it? It's, it's never going to be that. It's an accumulation of of, of the little things. It's the yes. little things done consistently that that really that create change. So, for you by doing this in the beginning how did it really change your whole mindset how did it how did it come about you know and then this I mean you were obviously planning on going virtual anyway at the beginning but how you said that you know you you got out of your routine how did this change everything once you sort of got a handle on your on your routine so I you know, I, I was depressed. I was, you know, if you asked me then I would have told you no, but looking back, you know, I was depressed. I had anxiety. I was, you know, I was miserable and it's because I had no control over anything. And there was, I wasted so much time. And once I started planning and getting my routine and focusing on me and taking that break in the middle of the day, I was actually more productive because this is what I would do. I would be, you know, editing a video and I'm so tired. And when you're tired, what do you do? You pick up your cell phone and now you're on your cell phone and you're even more tired because it's another screen. So I did time blocks and I made sure that I stuck to them and I got rid of my bad habits because I replaced them with good habits. So, and there's also a reward system that we talk about and, you know, you can't do this until you do that. So, you know, I couldn't go for a walk until I finished editing my video. Well, I made sure that there was no distraction editing my video because my reward and my, now my new habit was going for a walk and being outside and getting oxygen and sunlight and all that stuff. So I actually worked less time like clockwise because I was more productive because I was focusing on my habits and my routine. So that reduced my stress that reduced my anxiety because I wasn't saying scratching things off and putting them on to the next day. Everything that needed to be done today was done today because I was realistic about my time because I took my time back and I knew because I was home, I wasn't going to do as much as I would have if I was in the office. So I stopped also being so hard on myself and learned when enough was enough. And when we we have to realize when good is good enough and Mm -hmm. we have to set realistic goals and it takes a while and it takes about two months for someone to start this out to realize what a realistic goal is and how much can actually be done in a month. And, And then we break it down to how much can be done in a week and how much can be done in a day. 
because we are, everybody's deep down. If you are a successful person, you are an overachiever. Doesn't matter if you're a CEO or if you're a stay at home mom and you know, you're writing a list of the chores you want to do that day. Realistically, you can only get so much done without killing yourself and still feeling like you were successful. You know, so at the end of the day, you just want to be able to look back and say, I won the day. I did everything I needed to do to be successful. And everything that didn't get done today can get done tomorrow because it's planned for tomorrow and it's not planned for today. And it takes a while. You know, there were some days that I was bored. I'm like, all right, what's next? But I stopped because I had to learn how much I could handle with my time. And that's the other thing. If you get done with something quickly, just leave it. And now that's time for you. And then yeah. you'll start to learn. So it takes, you know, it's why my program is 90 days because it takes a good month to learn and to retrain yourself how much of this is going to take your time and how much of it isn't like, what's this going to take? What's that going to take? You know, do you really need, is, does it really take 45 minutes to get your kids ready? If you get out of bed first, make your coffee and have that alone time instead of laying in bed for 45 minutes and now you're 15 minutes late and going to get your kids ready. If you do everything in a timely manner without stress, you're a lot more efficient. Right. So it is all about just laser focused, get the stuff done. And then, yeah, if there's time, I love that. I mean, it's it's funny, isn't it? I, I know a lot of people, you know, a lot of people out there will be, you know, they're into writing lists. And, and the problem is, is if there's too many things on that list, and they don't get done, you don't actually get the endorphins that you actually get from achieving. So if you set yourself 10 tasks and seven got done, you don't get the endorphins that if you only wrote three things down and you still only got three, so that's less than seven, but you get endorphins because you've ticked them off and you've won the day. Yeah. Yeah. So, the yeah thing I love that. Scratching that thing off a to-do list, but and that's the thing, like you can make a list and that's, you know, I have, so I have a yearly list, a quarterly list, a monthly list, and then a weekly list and then a daily list in the business, in my business life. So, and, and in my personal life. So, cause they kind of go hand in hand, but you have to know how much time a task takes. So if you're going to the doctors and that doctor appointment is an hour, the actual appointment is an hour. That's one thing. You still have travel time. That is one thing that people do not account for is travel time. So when, how long is it going to take you? So if it takes you 30 minutes to get there, now whatever you're doing beforehand has to end 35 minutes before that doctor's appointment. So you can go to the bathroom and get in your car to go to the doctor's appointment. It's not, you know, so you have to know all of these things. So you know, when you're planning your week out, you always put in your standing appointment. So for me, as a gym owner, I have classes that I teach. And then I have a meeting with my business coach. And then I know when I'm having podcast interviews, all of that goes into my planner before anything else does. Because some of those things are different each week. Or if I have a massage, like this week, I have a massage on Thursday, I already know that. So why would I plan something else to happen during that time or plan a big project on Thursday when I know three hours of my day is going to be spent with a massage because it's 90 minutes and 30 minutes for travel to and from and getting ready and all that stuff. So, but if I only plan 90 minutes, I now have another 90 minutes of my day that I think is accounted for. That's really not. So now I'm going to over plan. And at the end of Thursday, I don't have those endorphins and now I'm going into Friday already stressed because I'm thinking about what I didn't achieve on Thursday. And then that's when you get into that rat reel of that rat reel of, you know, you're, you're just burying yourself every single day because you're not boosting your own confidence. And that's really what we need to do is to get realistic. And like I said, there were days that I was bored because I didn't plan enough and that's fine. Cause then I just had more time for myself and I was even a better mindset the next day. So it's, that's why it's important. And like I said, it does take some time to get used to. And, but we are so habitual and so routine that, you know, we don't go to a new doctor every month. You're not changing your primary care doctor every month. So you know how long it takes to go to your doctor. You know how long mm -hmm. it takes to travel to your hairdresser. 
you know how long it takes to travel to the grocery store you know and then another thing is is that where people go sideways is not planning the weekends and then you have a lot of wasted time and you're one of those people on sunday night and you're like where did the weekend go mm. Yeah, there you go. I mean, I'm and now you're stressed and going into Monday, and you're not planning for Monday because you're still wishing the weekend came back. There so, you go. You've got to plan your, your the, the good stuff as well. So it's not just yeah. about business; it's about the balance. Yep. About your relationships, about your family, about yeah, the going out. It's not just if you can put all that effort into planning out your business. Yeah, that's right. I mean, obviously, we all know that throughout this horrendous time that hopefully is over now um that you know there wasn't anything to plan and i think that's what it was wasn't it it was that yep. having having no i mean i continued working through her i did a, 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 a an extra job because i think i would have gone insane sat indoors um but the what the, the hardest part was the weekends like you know when it is yeah you're not working and there is nowhere to go and there is nothing to do and there is nothing to plan for and I suppose we are all, uh, we do like to, you know, human beings do like something to have, you know, we need something to aspire to, to look forward to. And that was taken from us mm -hmm. globally. Everybody was in the same boat, really. That was just taken from us. So I think that's where I think some people, not everyone, possibly more the introverts were probably quite happy, actually. They could get away. But not too long, because even then, after a while, they're going to struggle with it. But the ones who are, do like to be out and about, I think struggled even more because, uh, yeah, there was nowhere to go, nothing to do. Um, so, yeah, you say, you talk about, I mean, yes, of course, there's good habits and there's bad habits. But, um, yeah, what would you say is the real difference? Because, yeah, I'm sure I've got some bad habits. <laughs> Probably be chaining, but... Well, for you, what would you say is the difference between the good and the bad habit? So a good habit is something that's going to take you closer to your goal. So a bad habit is something that's going to take you farther away from your goal. So, it, you know, for, you know, a journalist watching the news is a good habit. For me, it's a bad habit. So it all depends, you know, so... And if you're stressed and you're, you know, complaining about all the negativity on the news and you're still watching it, then that's a bad habit because it's causing your issue. So a bad habit is something that causes stress in your life that is taking you, simple answer is taking you away from your goal. And, you know, so if it's the news doesn't make you feel either way, but you're not being productive while you're watching the news and you have all these other things to do, then watching the news is a bad habit. And now, you know, or watching TV it doesn't need to be the news. You know, we don't want to hold on, hold everything in on the news. It could be, you know, watching if you're here in the state, you know, the Real Housewives. I don't know if you guys have that in the UK. You know, so watching reality TV or you know, it doesn't matter. But if it's taking you away from your goal and get, making you less productive, so you know, if your goal is, and I work with clients that have all different, you know, talking about cleaning out the house, talking about moving, you know, whatever it might be. If you're looking to clean out, you know, your kid's room had that it's gone off to college or to get through boxes because you just moved. This is a big one, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to go through those boxes that you just moved. You keep saying, I don't have any time. I don't have any time. Well, how much time are you on your phone? How much time are you watching TV? Now those become bad habits because it's taking you away from cleaning out those boxes. And every time you see those boxes, you cause yourself undue stress because you're not getting it done and you look at them and you're like, Oh, I'll do them another day. And you go back to doing what you shouldn't be doing, yeah. you know? And then, you know, cause and a lot of people are like, well, smoking, well, yeah, that's a bad habit, but that's totally different. You know, <laughs> because you could be smoking and making a million dollar deal at the same time. So smoking is just bad for your health. It's not, it, yes, it's a habit, but you know, it's not, that's what a lot of people try and go to, you know, I'll talk to a client. Well, I do smoke. Well, that's great. That's another topic. But, you know, you could, and I told that, well, you could smoke and make a million dollar deal over the phone at the same time, couldn't you? And they're like, well, I guess so. Well, okay, well then what we're talking about, that's not going to stop you from being productive. It's going to stop you from living a fulfilled life and a longer life, but that's a different topic. You know, so we really break down to things that, you know, if, you know, drinking is one that is a little bit more easier because you're going out to your friends, to the pub, to the bar, 
and you're not sleeping well at night. So that's where we go into those things that are bad health habits. But first we break down the physical things that we are doing compared to the things that are hindering our health because, you know, speeding is a bad habit. So, you know, it's, there's, we, then we, we go into that side of the stuff that is a little bit different, but right now we're going into the, we first tackle the things that are hindering our success and stopping us from being productive and causing us stress. We have to figure out what's our stressors and what's causing it. You know, I just had a client who she comes to the gym and she's also, I also have her, her habit and lifestyle. And she has told her pretty much her family how she really feels. And she was never took care of herself and she was taken advantage of by her parents. She was kind of like the, everything was, she's lost all this weight and they never say anything about it, but it's always everything her sister does. Her sister posts something on Facebook. She gets all this praise. She never gets this praise and, but she never had time to focus on it. But once we started getting her life and having her focus on herself, she started to realize this stuff. And through my coaching and getting her habits and getting her confidence up because she wasn't as stressed, she was able to tell them how she felt and, you know, she's finally able to stand up to herself. She actually just quit a committee that she's on that was causing her all this stress that she would have never been able to do. But now that she is protecting her time and also knows how much her time is worth, which is what we definitely at the end boil down to, she's not doing stuff that doesn't fulfill her. So that's the other thing is a lot of people, you know, and she's a teacher. So a lot of people that are salary, don't value their time. And, you know, I think that's a lot of people, but when we're talking about, if you ask someone, how much do you make an hour? And I don't know, I'm salary. Okay. Well, mm. you still have a value to your time. So, you know, I have a thing where I, you know, I don't prep my own food. I don't cook for my, I have somebody that cooks for us because that's below my pay grade. There you go. Yeah. You, got you know how much time I got back on my Sunday because I'm not at the grocery store ready to kill somebody because I can't stand the goddamn grocery store. <laughs> Do you know how much happier I am? There you, you go. Know? And it's it's those things like that that, oh, well, that's too much money. Well, maybe, but I'm now getting four hours back on my Sunday. How much is that worth compared to how much I'm spending someone to cook my food? Totally. And like you just said there, it is, it's, it is about the, you said, right, it's quite stressful going to the grocery store. So saving, I mean, I get, I'm, you know, huge, 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 huge believer in that, you know, stress is, is one of the biggest problems in our age, you know. Um, and I think any coach that has come on there at some point, there has something's come up about stress, about cortisol. That cortisol being in the body, it is, it's not given the importance that, that it should because I really think that that is a major problem I mean like even you saying earlier about um speeding that isn't it funny you tend to speed when you're late for something so yep. you're under more stress and so it's all everything you've said there is is just all so relatable because when you do manage your time properly and then you leave on time you are less stressed you don't feel the need to race because you've allowed enough time I mean, I've just blessed my my daughter, my my youngish, my seventeen year old. She had she's just had her first um, trial shift at Nando. I don't know whether you get Nando's over there. Um, it's a sort of Portuguese chicken place, and um, she was so nervous. So I said, "Right, relax. I will drop you. We'll get there fifteen minutes early." You know, because I do because she does suffer with a little bit of anxiety. She is a bit more of an introvert, not like me. <laughs> she's a quiet one. So I got there and I was sort of kept driving around because I didn't want her to be on her own. And I dropped her off. And as I was coming back, literally to come onto this, she's messaged me, she's gone to the wrong one. <laughs> so there's two of these restaurants in our town. And I said, right, darling, don't stress. It's a good job that we were early. We were there for quarter two. So they have phoned the other restaurant to say, you're coming. You're going to get there in time. Breathe. Now, if we hadn't have got there 15 minutes early, she would have been under so much stress and feeling anxious because this was, you know, it's a trial shift, it's her first ever job. But there you go. It's all about, yes, prep, breathing, <laughs> so that you're not late. Uh, there's so much to this, so much to this. And, uh, and yeah, I, I mean, I'm 
yeah, I'm with you there. Stress is the is the biggest problem, and I don't think um, everybody realizes how much stress, unnecessary stress, they're putting themselves under every day. So what you're doing is actually helping them manage their so it's a little bit of time management going on there, and yes, then looking at the stressful things going on in their life and finding ways to to remove them, right? Yep. And those, you know, they can be people, they can be events, they, it can be, you know, and I, you know, a big thing that I talk about with stress is that, you know, now that we're getting back into life and being able to see people, it's okay to not want to see your family. It is okay to not want to see someone that you used to be close friends with. And because you've realized with this time apart, they are part of the problem. Like, and it's okay to say no. And that's why, you know, you just say, like, I don't, like, I have this prior commitment. That prior commitment might be watching Netflix, but it is still a commitment. And that's why we go into planning our day. And you really have to take, like, you only cancel plans that you want to cancel. And, you know, it's not a big deal to say no. And I, you know, a lot of times we compare it to our COVID circle. And I tell people, you know, when you're really stressed and you really need people, if somebody, you know, reaches out and says, do you want to go to dinner tonight? And they were one of those people that you, you know, gave the excuse of, oh, we can't see people, even though you were sneaking people into your house because it was, you were a bad person. If you had, you know, someone in your house that didn't live with you, if they weren't one of those people you were sneaking in your house during the lockdown, you probably don't need to say yes to them. <laughs> you know, and it's, you know, we had our own little COVID circle. We had, you know, some, two of our close friends were still over all the time because, they were over the day we shut down. So what the heck's the difference at this point, you know, but there were still people in August. We're like, no, we're not, you know, we're, we're really just playing it safe and not going out too much. So, you know, maybe next time when we were traveling, you know what I mean? So, but it was like, it, if there was that excuse there, you know, we were never given more of a better excuse to say no to people when we always say yes. And, you know, I, you know, I, if most people that come to me, they have yes syndrome and they don't know how to say no. And that is one thing that, you learn without knowing you're learning it because you're taking back control of your own time and you're focusing on yourself. And it's like, you know, same reason why they say in the airplane, make sure you put your oxygen mask on first before you put on somebody else's. And you have to take care of yourself before you can take care of anybody else. And it goes back to, you know, and you're just like, Oh, you know, I'm taking care of my kids. Like, that's great. But you also don't want your kids to look back when they're 30 and have the same bad habits that you do. Mm -hmm. Very and true. then you feel bad because now you're older and you're like, I created that. Right. And you're trying to teach them not to do it, but it's too late because it's already ingrained in them because you did the same thing. Yeah, you created a habit. But, you know, like you say, all habits can be changed. All habits yes. can be changed. Yep. And it is, it, and, and I love that it's, it is about finding that balance and realizing that it is okay to spend time on self-care. I don't know why we've come to this conclusion that, and, and yeah, I'm not saying it's just women, but I do feel that more women it have is this women. issue, right? That, you know, if I'm spending time out, like having a massage or having a, taking time out for me, when I should be done to do something with the kids or my partner or whatever it is, um, yeah. I hope that that's another thing that's come out of, you know, the last two years of the importance of, even if it's a 10 minute walk in nature or just something, time for yourself, a little bit of self care is so important. Like you say, I mean, you can't give from an empty cup, can you? So you should come first, right? You should yep. come first. Self-care is not selfish. There you go. Or even looking at selfish is not necessarily a negative word, you know? Right. You, you know, take care of number one and then you'll even have the energy all the time if they've managed their time working with you. They've got more time to, to, to help other people. But without that, they're just not going to. Yeah. So... For you, you've still got your online um, programs, so your personal training online as well. Right? Yeah, we're 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 mostly in studio. So we, I have a full blown. I'm sitting in the office now. We have a full blown in person studio, but we still do have that online option. It's not um, 
we don't really have to promote it as much anymore. I do like the focus of fitness online and then the, which is totally separate and apart from the habit and lifestyle coaching, which is completely online. Okay, cool. So for the listeners, I mean, if wherever you're, if you're watching on YouTube, all the links will be down below. If you're on the podcast page, the links will be down below. But if you're just listening and you're, it's the radio, Mint Wave, for the listeners, how would they get in touch with you if they feel the need that they, okay, they've realized that, okay, I need to take control back and maybe create some new habits. Um, can you sort of share with them what your program sort of entails and how they can get in touch with you? Yep. So we're going to grab life by the horns. So we have the 90 day bull program and um, you can go to jmclifestyle.com to find out more details. It's a 12 week um, program. We're actually launching um, it in again in January. So um, it's a 12 week group program. There is also one-on-one -on -one coaching available and it's a 12 week program where we're gonna go through your routine. We're gonna go through your habits. We create a vision board, we get your goals in place, and we really just chop down the tree all the way down to where we're at that trunk, and then we rebuild it all the way up and grow it from the roots because we really just need to take everything apart and look at where everything is and then help start from the foundation and grow everything back up so you can be flourished with lots of leaves on your tree in paradise and not losing your trees living in disaster and a hurricane and having all your branches fall off. So, um, you know, we, so yes, yeah, so that's it. We have our 90 day bull program. We, I also do one-on-one -on -one habit coaching. Um, not everybody likes the group setting, you know, but so we do one-on-one -on -one coaching. And, you know, like I said, in the beginning, I don't people, are, what is your name to your approach? I have, you know, tell people I have a no bullshit approach. It's what you do is different than what someone else does. And even in a group setting, a routine is a routine, but, and how we fix it is the same, but we might be fixing your routine different than somebody else's routine and getting those ideas off of other people and having that support of people that are going through the same process is also very helpful, encouraging, supportive, all of that good woo-woo stuff that makes you feel good. You know, um, I always, I love group, alpha, group atmospheres better than um, private, that's why we do group personal training. It's just the energy in the room is always so much better, which also helps with everyone, with self-esteem, with anxiety, with all of that stuff. It helps. So we have that support of the group and we really just, you know, get down to the nitty gritty and we treat you do get a private call with me, even in the group program where we are wor worrying about your goals and how we're going to get there. And then we just kind of go over the progress each week. And then I give you little tidbits on how to, what to do for the next week. And there's always a lesson and, um, but everybody is different. So people in our group right now, we have people that um, are teachers and they're just trying to stay above water and get back their, their, their me time, because this is teaching this year is worse than teaching last year, they're saying. And, mm -hmm. you know, so, and we have people that are looking to retire. We are look, have people that are looking to lose weight. We have people that feel like they're bad moms because they don't have enough time with their kids because they're the breadwinner in their family. So we have all of these different people that have different goals and different, you know, um, situations that they're looking to get better and success. I have somebody that's looking for a promotion. So what you're looking for as success might be looking as might look different than somebody else's, but it all starts with your routine and it all starts yeah. with your bad habits and getting back control of your time and having a routine that works for you and not against you. Right. And yeah, I mean, you're so right. It doesn't matter what the goal is, whether it's a fitness goal, whether it's a sticking to a diet, whether it's a business goal, the way we achieve goals is actually the same. It can be the same formula. Right. Oh. And uh, I mean, I, you know, I know, I mean, I think the, think the numbers do change, don't they, all the time? You know, they say it takes 21 days to create a new habit. Um, I'm not sure that I follow that. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, 90 <laughs> days is a, is a safe amount of time. There's, you know, so much transformation can happen in a 90 day as long as you're being consistent. And I do think that. Um, you know, a lot of people think they can do it on their own. 
Um, but it's going to be so much easier having a coach and like, so what you've got there are having a support system. We know research shows that having a community is going to help people um, stay on track. And also the fact that there is a bit of accountability because we're, we're all human. Um, we're all, you know, it, it, sometimes we can have all the willpower in the world in the beginning, but then something distracts us and willpower goes out the window. That doesn't make us a bad person or a failure. It just means that I do believe that everybody needs a coach. We all need, I need a coach. I have a coach. Yep. I think I have everybody a coach. needs a coach. Yep. We all need somebody to hold us accountable or even the perception. I mean, I'm sure you're not going to be knocking on their doors, but they will feel obliged when they've yep. got their session with you that, right, have I done what I said I was going to do this week? And it just keeps people on track, doesn't it? Yep. So, and there's, and I, you know, I don't know why, but some people feel that it's almost, it goes back to the, a lot of people want to do it by themselves. You know, I don't, I can't, if I ask for help, that means I failed. And it's so not true. It's so not true. We all need a little bit of help, a little bit of support to actually help us achieve our goals, whatever they are. Yep. So, um, so you have, sorry, can you repeat the website for, for the listeners? jmclifestyle.com. Awesome. Okay. So, yep. especially, you know, New Year's resolution, I mean, what better time, you know? Um, I don't know why everybody waits till the New Year <laughs> to start. New well, I'm hoping, I'm hoping this year we flip that calendar and it's really a new year because I feel, I tell you, I say 2021 is just a really bad sequel. I'm hoping that, you know, 2022 is a brand new movie. I cannot explain how much I hope you are correct. I really, honestly, I, I don't think I can cope with much more. So I am. I'm Not that I watch the news, so I actually don't know what is going on with our different rules or whatever. But I'm truly hoping that this is, this. we're, we're done with this. <laughs> we've, got to, we've got to move on. Come on, people. So, yes, yeah, let's... Uh, Hope that 2022, guys, what just think, what can you achieve in 2022 by just making some small, they don't have to be massive changes, but I think a lot of people even resist change in yep. and of itself. Like, let, let's not we even go what, what the change is. Yeah, we have to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Oh, it is so true. Because nothing's going to, you know, nothing is. You keep going the, the way you're going, nothing's going to change, right? Yeah. So if you want 2022 to be your year, then get in touch with Julie. Start changing some of those habits so that you can achieve whatever it is that you want to achieve. Awesome. Absolutely. Cool. So are you, are you, how happy are you with now the changes that have happened? Isn't it funny that, again, like, like we said right at the beginning, sometimes, these things that are sent to, <laughs> I'm sure they're sent to test us. But, um, yeah, because we don't see the big picture, how do you feel now, this, you know, year down the road almost, and you've changed certain things in your own life, in your own business, how happy are you with all these changes now? Um, it's, it's amazing. I have, you know, me and one of my coaches had a, you know, a falling out during like right in the start of COVID. Cause I was so stressed and so anxious and so scared that, you know, I reacted wrong. So I was able to, you know, once I reduced my stress and my depression, take a step back and be like, I really screwed up. Please like begged her to come back. And, you know, she has noticed a difference. I don't react as fast. I'm not reactive. So I'm more proactive because I can see things coming because I'm planned. I know what's going on and it's not, what am I doing today? It's, am I done yet? Like I've done everything and now let's wait. I, it's my time. So I can go home. I can take my little nine month old puppy for a walk and watch TV and, you know, meet people from all across the world on podcast interviews and, really just expand my horizons and I own my time. And, you know, if I want to go to the mall and spend three hours shopping this afternoon, I can do that because I've already done everything that I needed to do. So I am okay. living my life and, you know, I'm living it how I want to, not how, you know, 
my business is telling me I need to. Awesome. We found balance. So thank you so much for your time, Julie. Um, truly inspirational because, yeah, I know so many people that have lost so much, but it is about not, you know, turning it around, you know, not dwelling on that and looking for the open door. So really thank you for your time. And to the listeners out there, I will see you or you will hear me. This time next week on A Coffee with Karen. Bye for now. Doesn't want to end. Oh, not yet. Good job we can edit. It really doesn't want to end. End broadcast. An error occurred. Hmm, that's interesting. That's never happened. Hmm. End. That is so weird. I know if I leave the studio, it's weird. It keeps going, doesn't it? And broadcast. How mad. Right, well, don't worry. That will be all done. Oh, well, that'll be recorded. That's no worries. Thank you for your time, Julie. You're welcome. Thank you. Best. All right, bye. Welcome to the Coffee with Karen podcast, a weekly chat show discussing everything from holistic health to current affairs from a mental, physical, and spiritual perspective. Get your weekly cup of positivity with a sprinkling of woo-woo.